I, I was retired. I was retired and I was going to hang out and work with five kids a week and, you know, relax and move to a 55 and over community at some point and, you know, just take it easy and... and... Oh no, I'm correct. I'm going to go see you in that hotel of yours and go in the room and pop out with a meal, boo-boo. Mm -hmm. Over the course of, of working with those kids, Aiden happened to live in the house of someone I was working with, so in a, a foster home, a resource home. And Aiden just walked through the room one day and looked at me and said, could you help me with this Thoda? He had a little lisp going on. I knew we were going to adopt him. <laughs> at that point, I just knew that, that it was right, um, and, and, it, and it was. So I remember that day, he, he well, you know, Prior to that, he's, he would always come home like, I met this kid and I want to adopt this. And, you know, and I, you know, it was the same old story. And he said, are you crazy? I just started my uh, master's program and what are we going to end with? Blah, 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 blah. And 10, 15 minutes later, he came in crying and he said, I really think we should do this. Like a, there was something different in his voice and there was just something different about how I heard it. And um, I just thought about it and I just felt, you know, this is the time. Yeah, I, I, I immediately came back 10 minutes later, crying, as he said. And I, I said, yeah, I, I think we should do it. Prior to him coming to us and, and when he was in the resource home, the resource parents used to ask me for tips on dealing with him because he would do things like punch his teacher in the face. He was very, very aggressive, very, uh, lots of tantrums and stuff like that. I had, a, I had a lot of fears. I had a lot of concerns and practically none of them came true. I, I kind of feel like I wasted time like worrying about those things. I wasted time thinking that, you know, he's going to oh, he's going to be angry or he's he's going to hate me. None of that none of that came true. I'm a better person because of him. I think we're our relationship's better because of him. You know, and I think I I appreciate life more because of him. So much better than I had anticipated that it was going to be. It's a funny story because Every, every time I tell him, well, when I told him that story initially about how nervous I was to meet him, he says, Dad, you don't need to worry about that. I like black people. <laughs> you don't have to. I was like, well, that's not why I was nervous. He goes, I'm not a racist. You don't need to worry about that. Aiden moved around. Aiden's one of now six who moved from house to house, but of, of the six, they're all in care. We're all adopted out. And then um, mom surrendered rights for him because she knew she couldn't care for him, um, but continued to have children. Because I already knew Aiden, they initially tried to process us as friends and family. Yeah. But somebody in Trenton said no. You know, so in the middle of our whole process, we went from, okay, you have to do this training to you have to do that training. They, because they were going that route, we never, his worker never came with me to go see him. So I stopped counseling the, the youth that was in that resource home because I knew that there was no way that I could do it knowing that my kid was going to be upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe about five months later, um, they said, you know, he's been moved around so much. And the last time that he was moved, it was in the middle of the night. It was with police. 
he was in foster care with another foster child who that resource parent didn't really, the, the other foster child was more of a problem. Mm -hmm. And in order to try to get that child moved, said she couldn't have both of them. So they moved Aiden. And ultimately they moved Aiden to a place where some bad stuff happened to him. When that came to light, um, they removed him in the middle of the night, police removed him. And, and so he was an emergent placement in the foster home that he was in. He was terrified every time his worker was coming because he thought he was being removed. Um, so they said, you already, he already has a familiarity with you. You and Ed go down and make him want to move. And that's essentially what we did. So the first visit we went down and um, we played baseball and um, we brought, his, minions were his, were his favorite thing. And we brought this minion game and um, just sort of got to know him. Then the second visit, we took him out and bought him sneakers. And um, he said, uh, when he put the sneakers on, he's like, oh my God, these are like having pillows for my feet. So during one of Aiden's visits, um, th this furniture is different, than, but there was always a, a double chair there and Aiden and I sit there together. That's our spot. Um, but during one of his visits, he, um, one of his sleepover, when, when we progressed the sleepover visits, um, he got scared and he ran behind the chair and he ducked behind the chair and he was screaming, I want my mom. Now he hadn't been with mom in three years um, and he didn't refer to his resource mom as mom. So it was just one of those sorts of uh, behaviors. And so um, we just talked about, okay, well, how about if we play a game? And if after we play a game, if you still want your mom, maybe we'll, you know, we'll call Heidi and maybe take you back to um, your resource home. Um, so he said, okay. And we sat right over here and, and, and played a game and, and Maya, the little dog, uh, misses. We each took a turn for her, and, and as we went around, he sort of calmed down. Um, and I think as I alluded to, Aiden um, is on the spectrum uh, of autism, and so regulating his emotion is really difficult. Um, but between Ed and I helping him regulate his emotion, he's really learned a lot about regulating it himself. We started with a, a behavior chart uh, from the beginning. You know, so from day one, he had like a little paper behavior chart where he get stars or now he has um, one that has his chores and he gets, we call it chore pay rather than allowance. Uh, computer time based on his behavior um, or video game time based on his behavior. You know, pay him once a, once a month, it goes on the calendar each week now. But it used to be every day. Now Aiden, now, if, if you asked any one of his teachers like he is just the sweetest, kindest boy. So when he first came to us, he was you know, having all these behavioral problems in school. And so we sat down and we worked on an IEP for him and we decided um, that we really wanted to, him to just not mind going to school. So his first day that he lived here, he had the extended school year in Waretown still. And I literally had to drag him and he was crying and he didn't want to be there. I went down to the school, I talked to the DCPMP folks. I was like, look, this isn't gonna work. I want him over here. They said, fine, do it. We had him go into a classroom with a, a teacher who was just the sweetest, kindest, loving, and he loved going to school. And then another teacher just uh, became, I don't, I don't wanna say surrogate mom, but the female, the prominent female in his life because he's got two dads. And so, not the first teacher, but the second teacher, she asked if, you know, if we would agree to take him out of the autism classrooms and put him in an LLD class, and we agreed. And she stayed with him all through that school, and now he moved to a different school. But, but still, I mean, he, you know, Mrs. Comstock is his teacher. And um, Aiden struggled reading. You know, I'm never gonna learn to read, and he's got dyslexia and, you know, learning disabilities as a result of autism. And, um, He's reading, and largely as a result of her working with him. And so, you know, he loves her and, and she loves him. Um, but he, he made honor roll every marking period last year. High honor roll three times and honor roll one time. His, his approach to school has completely changed. And he loves school now. And, and he, gets a lot, he gets a lot of recognition for being a very positive peer and he gets recognized for being a very 
a kind, you know, a lot of kindness awards. To me, that's actually even more important than the grades because he's just such a thoughtful kid. For Christmas, my, my brother sent him money for him to buy something that you know, he, he would want for himself. Hayden wanted to buy toys for the kids at Children's Hospital. And so we went out to, Toys R Us was still open at, at the time that this happened. Well, we bought toys and we went over to Children's Hospital and dropped them off. Even I went to pick them up from the bus today. And so I'm standing there, and, you know, so they call, all come running out. Well, he has these two friends, they're two brothers, and they're very, um, they're on the spectrum. And one of them came off without his book bag. And Aiden he freaked out, he goes, you have to get your book. He ran back to the bus, screamed for the bus driver to stop. You know, he left his book bag, wait, wait, wait. And you know, he was, you know, so concerned that his friend, and he, you know, he's just, just very helpful, very thoughtful and caring. Wanted to do blankets for the homeless, did blankets for the homeless. Um, I'm kind of active in the town and, and we did something for the, the, the police force and Aiden was right there and, and involved um, with it. And so the, the mayor knows Aiden and Aiden's the superstar of, of our town. You know, we have a, a, a favorite restaurant in the town and, and the gentleman who owns it, um, Aiden knows his Uncle Joe. Every celebration, every birthday, his adoption party, we've done there. Um, there, there. There was a donut shop called Donuts for Donuts, and, and there was an ice cream parlor that opened up on his gotcha day, or his adoption day. They opened up special, and they had an Aiden Sunday that was special. So, I mean, the town really has you know, embraced us and him. Um, and school-wise, I mean, his, his teachers, I can't say enough about how good they are. But Aiden has become uh, a part of Berkeley. He was, he was in the newspaper and, you know, um, the, the schools, as, as we talked about. So every, every part of this community has really been very supportive. And, and we could take him anywhere, a, a park. Aiden, Aiden, we're, we're in the grocery store. Aiden, Aiden. Yeah, so Aiden is, uh, he's made his mark on the town. Loves playing tennis. I've never spent so much time in a skate park in my life. He just will ride the skate park for like four or five hours straight. Uh, he loves nature. Uh, matter of fact, the last time we were in New York City, he's basically, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> There's just no trees. And I took him to this car show one time. I said, uh, let's go look at these cool cars. And he said, you know, so he's walking around. He's like, I don't, he goes, I want to climb the tree. So I paid his money to get in the car show, and he's climbing the trees. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he, he's very adaptive, like, but anything with nature, he loves. So he tells me, well, when I open the thermos and I have a hot meal, I feel like I'm home. So I make him pots of beefaroni on the weekend, and I'll freeze, you know, the thermosized portions or, you know, different sorts of chicken and macaroni or, or whatever it is, or little meatballs or, you know, the teeny little meatballs. And so I do a thermos for him each morning and he has his hot lunch. And I don't care if like, oh, well, you know, you're spoiling him. So what? If there's anyone in this world who deserves to be spoiled, that little boy right there needs to be spoiled. I, I really feel like adopting Aiden has given me a purpose in life, a focus in life that I didn't have before. I've, my priorities have completely shifted. Um, I'm not necessarily worried about things that I used to worry. I used to, you know, freak out if my car was dirty inside of my car. Now there's toys, every, toys everywhere, just, just putting his muddy feet all over my, my back of my seat. Um, I, I just don't. I don't worry about a lot of things I used to worry about. You know, I'm more focused about you know, his well-being. And, a, and a, a huge part of that is I'm focused about, focused on my well-being. Like I want to be here for him, thinking about what I'm eating and you know, how healthy I am. So it's really changed my approach to life in general. Yeah, like, you know, I was, I was always pretty good with money, but now, you know, now I'm really thinking about like how you know, what, what can we do to provide for him? And what can we do to establish him financially when he gets older? Oh my God, do it.
do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Um, everything that I could think of as a skepticism or a hesitation or whatever, when it's all said and done, it's just the most amazing experience ever. And as many times as I, as I go into you know, resource homes or people who are fostering to adopt and, and help them to sort of, you know, wait the wait and, 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 and deal with, I, I worked with one kid who, who was in the system seven years before he, they finally um, gave the consent to adopt. But when it happens, it's just so amazing. So do it would be my advice. I'm 10 years old, I'm in fifth grade. Probably English, because math, like we always start something new, because like math, when like we start something new, I go crazy, I'm like, ah, how am I supposed to do that? No, it's about like a cow to get mucus out of it, its nose, it licks it it's inside of its nose. I actually don't know if I'm gonna do baseball again. At the middle of nowhere, like, like a noob pops out with a sniper, like, ooh, I see some meat.